Welcome to BigCountryPreps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is the Countdown to Two-A-Days series, our daily look at an area football team and the key questions we're going to be answering about that team in our August 17th preseason football preview here at Big Country Preps. I'm with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom. And tonight, Dan, we're talking about one of the one of the big powers in the big country, the Jim Ned Indians. Yeah, and this is an interesting year for Jim Ned because you look at some of the, the players that they've lost, guys who are really key players to their run to the state championship a couple of years ago, guys who were a really big part of last year's 12-1 and team uh, have graduated. But I don't think that this team expects really any drop-off, which is kind of the crazy part. Uh, they, they did lose 13 of their 27 lettermen, including seven offensive and five defensive starters. But uh, they, they've got some really key players still returning, and then they're they're calling up, uh, you know, reinforcements from a 10-0 and JV team. So I think Jim Ned expects to be very, very good again this year, and I think uh, most likely there's there's good reason for that. Yeah, I mean, they've lost uh, – this is a ball club that has lost uh, quite a bit. Uh, they they only returned 14 Latterman. They did lose some key players. The Wisher kid uh, is gone. Blaine Palmer's gone. Fitzgerald's gone. Cooper's gone. Nunez, Yardley. These were just mainstays. These were these were key ball players to the success that, that they've had over the last three years. But it's not like the cupboard is empty in Tuscola, Dan. They had a 10-0 and JV team last year, so I would expect them to – uh, reload somewhat. Uh, they're going to be a little bit on the young side. Uh, who knows? They might take a little bit step back while they gain some maturity, but this is going to be a, a, another very good team. And defensively, they may even take a step forward. Yeah. I mean, defensively, I think they're going to be very strong. Uh, offensively, I think the one big question is, is kind of who takes over for Tate Yardley at the quarterback position. He's been such a strong presence for them there. Uh, they're going to have to find, I'm sure they, they have a good idea who it will be, but uh, we'll just have to see uh, kind of how a young quarterback steps in there and is able to perform. Uh, one thing that, that did, I think, help them and, and will help them this year is that Braden Shipman got quite a bit of, of playing time last year at the running back position behind Wishart, had almost 500 yards, five touchdowns. And then obviously Troy Duran's a, a, an explosive receiver, a kid that I think has an opportunity to kind of be their, their number one guy there. But uh, they are going to have some holes to fill, obviously, on that offensive line. You mentioned some of those names uh, when you talk about Fitzgerald, Gatlin, Cooper, Nate Nunez. These are guys that, like you said, were big time players for them the last several years. Uh, so they're going to have to replace those guys, but uh, I think uh, they'll find a way to do that. They're going to be bringing in a, a really good new wave of talent. And then, like you said, I think defensively, uh, the, the, their defense could be a real strength for them. So it's going to be fun to see how that plays out. They have some big bodies to lean on. Uh, you know, Gage Stanlin is back and he's 6'5 and 260. Uh, they have another kid, uh, Maddox Cooper, uh, 5'11, 250. They do have some big bodies out there uh, still to lean on. It's still going to be a quality group. And I think that if they do find some quarterbacking and and if they can you know, compensate for the loss of Wishart, that, which is a big loss, mm -hmm. uh, this is still going to be a very good football team, possibly top 10. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then you look at their schedule, and, and they've obviously when you when you've had the success that they've had, uh, you know you're going to have a, a tough non-district schedule, and they do. They open up with a big, really fun area game at Holly. That'll be one with a lot of eyes on it. Then they host Holiday, which is always a good program at the 3A level. Go to Wall, which is expected to be much improved this year. Yes, uh, play yes. Rockdale, uh, a team from uh, uh, the, the Austin area. And then they close out uh, non-district with, with a home game against Eastland. So uh, a good, Look solid non-district man. Schedule. Look at Eastland lining up yeah. those toughies every year, man. I'm telling you, yeah. Eastland's just fearless there. But those first three games for Jim Ned are – that's really tough. I mean, really tough. We know about Holly. We know how good Holiday is. And this wall team is going to be very good. Um, that's still just overall a, a, a difficult non-district schedule uh, for Jim Ned. But you would expect that with all the success that they've had. Uh, going into district play, of course, they're going to be idle on September the 30th. And they go to Bowie uh, on October the 7th. It's a Bowie team we expect to be better. They host Clyde on October the 14th. That's a Clyde team that we think is going to take a step forward, a good young Clyde team. They're going to Breckenridge on the 21st of October, and that's going to be a tough Breckenridge football team, and that's going to be a great environment that night at Buckaroo Stadium. That's going to be a big ball game. Then they host Vernon on the 28th before closing things out at Iowa Park on November the 4th, and that could be for all the marbles. Uh, Iowa Park is going to be one of the favorites by a lot of preseason prognosticators' uh, opinion. That could be for the district title, all the marbles on the road on yeah, November the 4th. And, and I think this is a sneaky, tough district. District 3 has always been tough, but uh, obviously they lost uh, Wall and Early to 3A Division 2 this year with at the realignment. But I think this is still a, a sneaky, tough district for the reason you mentioned. Obviously, Iowa Park's dropping down from Class 4A. 
Uh, that's a very talented team. And then I think Breckenridge and Clyde are both going to be dramatically improved. We both think Bowie's yes. going to be improved. Uh, I, I think that, that, that uh, I, I still think Jim Ned's the clear favorite, but I think there are going to be a lot of games potentially in this district where, where they're going to be pushed a little bit. So I think that'll be good for them in the long run. Ask, uh, ask Brock about how fun it is to play Breckenridge. Yeah. You know, <laughs> going into Breckenridge is a big time favorite. Ask Brock about how fun that is. It, it's tough. Breckenridge mm. gave Brock all they wanted for years. Uh, and, and Jim Ned's about to find out how difficult that can be. It's uh, that's going to be a big ball game. If Breckenridge, uh, you know, reaches their full potential on, on October 21st, that's a big one right there. Yeah. I, I think if you're looking at games of the year, I think that's one that, that you and I both think could be a, a really big one in that district. And then obviously that district finale at Iowa park. Yeah. Iowa park maybe wasn't quite as strong last year, but that's still a very good football team for sure. So it should be a, a good challenge for the Jim Ned Indians. And with that, it's time to wrap up tonight's episode of the Countdown to Two-A-Day series, the Jim Ned Indians. Before we do that, we want to remind you, we've got three separate subscription packages here at Big Country Preps. We've got a monthly for five bucks a month, a semi-annual six-month subscription for four bucks a month and an annual 12-month subscription where you knock the price down to three bucks a month, 36 bucks for a full year of Big Country High School athletic coverage. We'd also like to remind you before we wrap up this episode of our countdown series uh, to once again, be on the lookout for that August 17th preseason football preview. We will just have a ton of area football content. You will not want to miss that. In the meantime, thank you for joining us for this episode of our countdown to two days series and make sure you join us again tomorrow. And we will be talking about the Brock Eagles here at BigCountryPreps.com.